In the wake of the decisive Battle of the Falkland Islands on December 8, 1914, during which the fearsome East Asiatic fleet of Admiral Maximilian von Spee had been routed with devastating losses for the Germans, the situation was far from resolved, as during the fray, one of von Spee's light cruisers, the SMS Dresden, had successfully escaped her British pursuers and retreated southwest back towards Cape Horn in the Pacific, leading to a desperate search being conducted by the Royal Navy so as to destroy this dangerous intruder. In the immediate aftermath of the Falklands battle, British Admiral of the fleet, Sir Frederick Charles Dubton Sturday, was informed by his fleet of cruisers that the Dresden had not been accounted for in the destruction of the German attack squadron, and that during the heat of battle, wherein the Royal Navy ships HMS Glasgow, HMS Kent and HMS Cornwall had concentrated their firepower on sister ships Leipzig and Nuremberg, leading to their subsequent destruction, the Dresden's last course had not been reliably established, meaning initially the British had no clue as to where the German menace had retreated and thus posed a severe threat to vital merchant shipping along the eastern shores of South America. Sturde ordering that merchant shipping to the Falkland Islands, including a convoy of eight colliers and the auxiliary merchant cruiser Orama, be provided escort by the armoured cruiser HMS Carnarvon, so as to present suitable firepower should the Dresden reappear. Going on only a hunch that the Dresden may attempt to escape back into the Pacific, Sturde ordered his two battle cruisers, HMS Invincible and Inflexible, to conduct a sweep towards Staten Island at the entrance to the Beagle Channel with HMS Bristol in support. The Beagle Channel, together with the Straits of Magellan to the north and the open ocean Drake Passage to the south, being three navigable passages around South America between the Pacific and the Atlantic Oceans, Sturde subsequently ordering HMS Glasgow and Cornwall to make for the Magellan Straits to intercept Dresden, but both vessels had expended nearly all of their ammunition while HMS Cornwall was running low on coal thus requiring both ships to return to Port Stanley in the Falklands to replenish their supplies. The British Admiral, after searching the waters around Staten Island, ordering his vessels to return to the Falklands on December 10th. As Sturde had suspected, however, the Dresden had indeed transited the Beagle Channel, anchoring in Shoal Bay on December 9th in order to appraise their seemingly hopeless situation. The ship's commander, Regat and Capitaine Fritz Ludica, sending Oberleutnant zur See or Lieutenant at Sea, Wilhelm Canaris, to negotiate with the Chilean naval representative for the region to allow the Dresden permission to remain in its sovereign waters for an additional 24 hours so as to replenish its dwindling coal supplies at the harbour of Punta Arenas, the capital city of Chile's southernmost region, Magallanes, and Antarctica Chilena, this being subsequently granted, and the German light cruiser was able to dock in the harbour on December 12th, taking on 750 tonnes of coal from an interned German steamer. Word reaching Sturde the next day that the Dresden had been reported in Punta Arenas, and thus he ordered his attack squadron to make for the Chilean harbour with all possible speed. By the time Sturde's fleet arrived on December 16th, though, Dresden had long departed, the hope of the German Imperial Admiralty Staff, or Admiralstab, being that the Dresden could continue to evade the Royal Navy, break through their lines back into the Atlantic, and return to Germany. But after nearly a year of operating constantly at sea, and having fought two major battles at Coronel and the Falklands, there was no hope that the ship, could muster the power necessary to evade British assault. Thus, Ludica chose instead to proceed further into the Pacific via Easter Island, the Solomon Islands, and the Dutch East Indies, in order to gain passage to the Indian Ocean, thereby allowing him to conduct his own raiding campaign against Allied merchant vessels, the ship being supplied by coal transferred from the German liner SS Sierra Cordoba, which provided 1,600 tonnes of additional coal fuel on January 19th, with Dresden's first victim coming on February 27th, when the light cruiser captured the British bark, Conway Castle, south of the island of Masatiera. Back with the British, as the Admiralty had considered the danger of the East Asiatic fleet now removed, Admiral Sturde, together with his armoured cruiser fleet of HMS Invincible and HMS Inflexible, was ordered back to Britain so as to join the Grand Fleet at Scarpa Flow, leaving Admiral Stoddart in command, as his own fleet of cruisers based in Port Stanley continued to comb the South Atlantic and Pacific for the elusive Dresden together with the various ships that were supplying her, the British ultimately finding Dresden by chance on March 8, 1915 during heavy fog, when the German light cruiser, which was drifting powerless due to the low visibility, spotted HMS Kent that was also drifting approximately 17 miles from her, beginning a desperate pursuit that would last five hours as the German attempted to outrun the closing British, Dresden being able to escape her fate, but in so doing had expended all her coal supplies and overtaxed her engines. With all of his options having run out, Ludica opted to intern the Dresden at the nearest Chilean port so as to preserve his vessel, and at 8.30 on the morning of March 9, 1915, the ship put in at Cumberland Bay on the island of Mazatierra, 
using the 24 hours permission to remain in Chilean waters, to contact the Admiralstab and request permission to intern the ship, to which the German High Command agreed, subsequently leading to the Dresden being handed over to the local representative of the Chilean government, the British being unaware that the German light cruiser had sought refuge at Mazatierra and continued to comb the Pacific for their elusive adversary, their only lead coming through intercepted coded wireless messages, though without the specific and frequently changing key necessary to break the code, there was little that could be done to identify where the light cruiser was hiding. Ultimately, the Dresden's hiding place was uncovered through the work of Charles Gage Stewart, the signals officer aboard HMS Kent, who was able to decode a message sent from the Dresden on March 9th requiring a collier to meet her at Juan Fernandez Islands, the archipelago to which Mazatierra belongs. The British fleet of HMS Kent, HMS Glasgow and the auxiliary cruiser Orma making all speed to this location, arriving on March 14th, where they found a worn-out and dilapidated Dresden seeking refuge in Cumberland Bay, while a majority of her crew were ashore playing a game of football. The three British ships now faced with a dilemma, as even though the Dresden had been interned and was now essentially the property of the neutral Chilean government, as well as sitting in their sovereign waters, there was no guarantee that the notoriously pro-German administration of Chilean President Ramon Barros Luco would not join the conflict at a later date, and potentially bring the Dresden back into service as an aggressor against British merchant shipping. HMS Glasgow thus challenged the Dresden to battle, but despite the Germans' pleas that their ship was interned and thus no longer a combatant in the war, the British warship sprayed the light cruiser with a salvo of shots that severely damaged the ship and set her alight, followed shortly thereafter by HMS Kent, the skeleton crew aboard the Dresden returning three shots before all the heavy guns were knocked out, Ludica being cornered against the towering cliffs of Cumberland Bay, having no heavy guns with which to fight, and being unable to move due to her worn-out engines and depleted coal bunkers, ordering that Oberleutnant Canaris be sent across to HMS Glasgow in order to negotiate their surrender, all while the bombardment of the Dresden continued until Ludica ordered the German battle ensign struck and a white flag raised. Canaris's deployment to the Glasgow, where he strongly voiced his protest as to their assault on an interned vessel in neutral waters to the British captain, John Luce, being done to buy time as Ludica ordered his vessel scuttled, the Germans fleeing the sinking Dresden aboard various open boats and retreating to the safety of Mazatierra the light cruiser exploding soon afterwards and rapidly settled on the bottom of Cumberland Bay at 11.15am, this short skirmish having seen eight Germans killed and 29 wounded against 15 British wounded by the three shells from the Dresden. In the aftermath of the battle at Mazatierra, 315 survivors of the Dresden were taken prisoner, 15 of the most severely injured being taken to Valparaiso by HMS Orma, where four subsequently died of their injuries, while political relations between the British and Chilean governments were severely strained with Chile declaring that the Royal Navy had infringed on their sovereignty and failed to respect their right to neutrality. A viewpoint reflected across the globe, with newspapers of the time describing the actions of HMS Glasgow and HMS Kent as an act of piracy. The British responding to the criticism by handing over the 315 captives of the Dresden to Chile as internees, where they remained on Mazatierra for five days until being transported back to the mainland by an interned German passenger liner under escort by two Chilean warships the sinking of the Dresden leaving Ludica suffering from shell shock, and thus meant responsibility for the fate of the ship's crew was taken on by Canaris. Subsequent to the internment of the Dresden's crew at Valparaiso in mainland Chile, Brigadier Capitan Fritz Ludica, together with a majority of his men, remained in South America until being finally allowed the option to return to their homeland in 1919, Ludica being assigned to oversee the liquidation and administration of the remnants of the German fleet at Xingzhou, China, under the outcomes of the Treaty of Versailles retiring from the Navy in 1920 with the rank of Rear Admiral, while Wilhelm Canaris was able to escape internment in August 1915 and returned to Germany two months later, Canaris gaining fame during the rise of Nazi Germany during the 1930s, where he achieved the rank of Admiral and was allocated Chief of the Abwehr, or German Military Intelligence Service, from January 1935 to February 1944, where he took a pivotal role in sabotaging Germany's efforts during World War II due to his opposition of the Nazi regime by deliberately using his position in the intelligence office to send the high command erroneous or incomplete information on enemy activities. The revelation of his subterfuge, ultimately seeing him hanged at Flossenburg concentration camp for high treason on April 9, 1945, less than a month before the defeat of Nazi Germany. Today, the Dresden lies at a depth of 230 feet beneath the surface of Cumberland Bay, the last remnant of von Spee's fearsome East Asiatic fleet that was able to successfully evade the Royal Navy for several months, but whose escape was ultimately futile 
in the midst of flagging coal and ammunition supplies, and the inability for the ship to undertake a comprehensive overhaul so as to make her engines suitable for the raiding campaign proposed by Ludica. The ship, even if it had avoided its fateful encounter with HMS Kent that expended its dwindling coal bunkers, being doomed to eventual capture or sinking by the pursuing British, as it dodged from supply ship to supply ship, the Battle of Mazatierra being perhaps the best case scenario as to its destruction, as a majority of the crew were ashore, and it was readily apparent that any attempt to fight it out with the superior British force would be a senseless waste of German lives, meaning those of the Dresden could escape in numbers far greater than her sister ships, which saw either a majority or all of their crews dragged to the bottom with their vessels.